Okay, first of all, this is supposed to be the weekly tech show, but since the schedule has been shifted a little this week for obvious reasons, we're, we're going to cover some of the bigger, uh, in some cases, more fun stories dominating the news. And we will have some tech stuff later on, but at this point, it doesn't really matter because you know that the show titles, they don't mean much anymore. So just bear with us. Thanks. Okay. Now, we've got some incredibly revealing news about Republican Congressman George Anthony DeVolder Santos of Long Island, New York, a man who seems to be physically and mentally unable to stop grifting and or lying. Pathological. He was hit with an updated indictment earlier this week, which added 10 new charges. Woo! <laughs> to the list of charges that he was already facing, and the details regarding this latest update really really make it seem as though George Santos never actually expected to win his election and was instead running with the sole intention of executing his biggest grift to date and uh, might have actually been caught off guard by the fact that he actually had to go serve in Congress because just wow. So these latest charges bring the total number of charges included in the indictment, uh, originally filed earlier this year, to 23. Wow. But let's rewind a little bit, because if for some reason you've missed out on our extensive and mind-boggling coverage of Mr. Santos, we've got quite the consolidated refresher for you. And in order to respect everyone's time, we're going to have to skim over a bunch of it and might miss a few things. But suffice to say... This dude is a prolific liar, grifter, and scam artist with what appears to be no remorse or self-reflection. He lied about where he went to high school and college. He lied about almost his entire career, claiming that he'd worked at places like Citigroup and Goldman Sachs. He lied about running an animal charity called Friends of Pets United, which he also used to steal money from a disabled military veteran whose dog needed life-saving surgery. Uh, he lied about his mom dying on or as a result of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, depending on when you asked him about it, mm -hmm. and also claimed that his grandmother escaped the Holocaust, in addition to claiming that he had employees killed during the Pulse nightclub shooting. He claimed at one point that he was Jewish and later clarified that he was simply Jew-ish. He downplayed accusations that he was a drag queen, and more recently, he was alleged to have been involved in a scheme where staffers would fundraise while pretending to be former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's chief of staff. He also probably ran a prolific uh, widespread credit card skimming operation, and he committed check fraud in Brazil and in the Amish country. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I know I'm forgetting things, but that's the gist. He's packed a lot into his 35 years. Uh, impressive in some ways. Oh, he also, like, uh, probably did a fake green card marriage because uh, he is a gay man and he married a straight woman mm -hmm. uh, and uh, may have used that to secure uh, citizenship in this country. Who's to say? Nobody knows. There's a lot going on here. Now, there are many more cases, as Elliot pointed out, of George Anthony DeVolder Santos telling lies. Telling lies. No, Papa or conning people out of money, but let's bring it back to the actual indictment that he's facing, including the uh, addition of the more recent charges, because with so much going on, you might have already forgotten that Santos was already arraigned and paid $500,000 himself to, to bail himself out of jail in May of this year, pleading not guilty to the original 13 charges, which included accusations of wire fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, and making false statements to Congress. From the AP's reporting back in May, among the allegations, prosecutors say Santos created a company and then induced supporters to donate to it under the false pretense that the money would be used to support his campaign. Instead, they say, he used the money for personal expenses, including designer clothes and credit card and car payments. Santos also is accused of lying about his finances on congressional disclosure forms and obtaining unemployment benefits while he was making $120,000 as regional director of an investment firm that the government shut down in 2021 over allegations that it was a Ponzi scheme. Santos didn't directly address the specifics of the charges to reporters, but when asked why he received unemployment benefits while employed, Santos cited a job change and confusion during the COVID-19 pandemic. I had a little bit of brain fog you and know, might have signed up for some unemployment payments that I didn't deserve. COVID, global supply chain, I mean, come on. Pa take your pick. There, There's some great excuses out there, and I'm going to choose one or two of them. But uh, that was the original indictment. Uh, the new DLC just dropped this yeah. week. Uh, so if you want to get the add-on or the expansion, What's well, up, here it gamers? is. gamers? Here you go. So cut to Tuesday this week when federal prosecutors announced 10 additional charges to be included in the original indictment. Here's Politico. 
According to prosecutors, Santos stole people's identities, made charges on his donors' credit cards without their authorization, and submitted false campaign reports that listed non-existent loans and contributions that were fabricated or stolen. The new charges in the so-called superseding indictment are one count of conspiracy to commit offenses against the United States, two counts of wire fraud, two counts of making materially false statements to the Federal Election Commission, two counts of falsifying records submitted to obstruct the FEC, two counts of aggravated identity theft, and one count of access device fraud. Last month, prosecutors disclosed in court papers that Santos has been in plea talks with the government. Yeah. <laughs> this man heard the phrase, be gay, do crimes, and he he's like, he ran with it. Yeah. It's, uh, again, if it weren't for all the illegality, you'd say that uh, it was impressive. His his uh, hustle and grind set is unmatched. I mean, I, I do have to give the smallest amount of credit yeah. because this- He yeah, came to the land of the grift and he, he made himself king of the grift. This is the American dream. And we often see that uh, it's often first generation immigrants who really embody the American dream <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in this way who really uh, do whatever it takes to rise yeah. to the top, coming from nothing. Now, sitting in Congress, uh, yeah. you you know, you might not agree with the methods, but you have to respect the ambition. Yeah, most do it with hard work, perseverance, starting a small business or, uh, or joining up to uh, a bigger company. Uh, well, there's also people like George Santos who are like, God, these people are stupid. I'm going to take them for everything they're worth. Yeah, he found a shortcut. Yeah. You know, like all speed runners, he relied on, uh, you know, Glitches in the system yeah. uh, to uh, you know bypass the harder parts and, and, and get to the end of the stage. He, he looked and he said, he, I can get away with so much just by having a nice fancy shirt and a, uh, the ability to do some smooth talking. Yeah, yeah. that's silver tongue. It's invaluable. Uh, the reporting continues. Prosecutors also accused Santos of stealing his donor's personal and financial information. And he, he just can't help himself. <laughs> no, not at all. It, it, it was like it's sitting on his desk and yeah. he's like, I probably shouldn't. It's like it's like any normal person like has has some chocolate. Yeah, like, uh, hmm. yeah, yeah man, I know I shouldn't. This it's, man it's sees late. a credit card number and he just can't. He can't help himself. Yeah, no. It's, it's, he's going to you take that credit card and spend money yeah. on it. He, if you gave him that like marshmallow quiz, he would have all three marshmallows. Yeah. He would find out where the other two marshmallows are hidden. He would eat the marshmallow, get the extra marshmallow, and somehow steal the identity of the scientist <laughs> conducting the experiment. I run the tests now and I'm eating all the marshmallows. <laughs> Uh, so prosecutors also accused Santos of stealing his donors personal and financial information and using it to repeatedly charge their credit cards without their authorization, then transferring the funds to his campaign, <laughs> the, ca the campaigns of others, and to his personal bank account. Okay, so he spread the wealth around a little bit. Sure, he's like, uh, 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 what's his name? Robin Hood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in one case, Santos allegedly repeatedly charged a donor's credit card with at least $44,800 in charges. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he, he then transferred the vast majority of one of those charges, an amount of nearly $12,000, to his own bank account, <laughs> according to the indictment. A lawyer for Santos declined to comment on Tuesday. Santos, who is running for re-election, has said he doesn't plan to resign from the House and intends to continue his campaign. Quote, I'm going to fight the witch hunt, he told reporters following his arraignment. I'm going to take care of clearing my name. And here's uh, just a short clip of Santos being asked about these new charges while he was leaving a House GOP meeting earlier in the week. Here you go. No comment. I was. I did not have access to my phone. Prosecutors no, say you defrauded the American I have public. No will you resign? Clue of what you guys are talking about? No, I will not. Excuse me. You not they said that you stole people's identities. Did you steal people's identities? <laughs> Did you commit identity fraud? I'm still going to vote in the voters. Speaker's election. What do you have to say to your constituents? I will not. I have no comment. I was in conference like everyone else without my phone, so I have well, nothing to talk about. I need to take a look at my phone. Did you commit? Why are you talking about the priest? Did you charge to your credit card donors money? Did you use their credit cards to reward yourself? That's the allegation. Uh, no. I will look at it. And why, should you be able to vote? why should you be able to vote in the speaker's election? Such a key election when you've been charged with all these crimes. And yeah, all I can think is that this dude never wanted to win the election. No. He wanted to disappear after this election. And unfortunately for him and everyone, he won. Yeah. No, the plan makes total sense when you remember that in any given election cycle, there are hundreds of congressional races going on. 
uh, and many times that number of yeah. candidates running in those races, there's just not not enough people give a shit to really pay that much attention to any of these races. Yeah, and on a local closely. level, people are like donating to people that they assume are aligning with their values or whatever. They see the R, they're like, okay, yeah. No one is looking into that afterwards. Yeah. I mean, the guy who apparently got charged $44,000 probably should, but... Uh, yeah, that was a bit brazen. <laughs> it is weird that we're only finding out about uh, finding out about that now. That seems like that should have been one of the first things. Pretty wild. Uh, but yeah, in response to these additional charges, House Republicans swore that this time it would be different, and uh, they should really do something about this Anthony George DeVolder Santos guy, uh, claiming that they would introduce a resolution to expel him from Congress. With fellow New York Representative Anthony Desposito tweeting. Today, I'll be introducing an expulsion resolution to rid the People's House of fraudster George Santos. The resolution will be co-sponsored by fellow New York freshmen Nick LaLota, Mike Lawler, Mark Molinaro, Nick Langworthy, and Brandon Williams. You know, you might not be too shocked to hear that this resolution hasn't actually been introduced uh, as of the time we filmed this. Yeah. And that might have something to do with the fact that Santos essentially threatened anyone who tried to have him removed, saying in a lengthy tweet, I look very much forward to seeing the anti-American attempt by weak rhinos to oust me without giving me my right to due process. Remember, if I'm in fact ousted, fascism will officially be well and alive in the United States of America, <sighs> and these members will be the champions of it. I do want to remind my dear colleagues, who all but one have deep, long, troubling careers in politics, that I will have a lot of time on my hands to return the favor in the most expedient fashion mankind has ever seen. I'm done with the hypocrisy and the projection coming from the same individuals for the last 10 months. Hashtag political warfare does not scare me. I find my strength in God, and with him in my life, all is possible. <laughs> you really turned into what, a snidely whiplash or something towards the uh, end there. Yeah, no, because he, it, it, he sounds like a fucking supervillain. Yeah, he's, I'm going to tie these people to a railroad track. <laughs> <laughs> You'll post. never be rid of me, George Anthony DeVolder Santos! Cool. <laughs> Diabolical. Um, well, look. The Brazilian bandit. That's right. Uh, always entertaining when this guy has something come up. I mean, it sucks for everyone who's a victim of his various financial crimes. But uh, can they even get rid of him? Does Congress even is Congress even in session? Uh, I don't know. Is there, a, do we have a Congress? Everything is kind of up in the air now. I, I think the meetings lasted all of like uh, five minutes or something. Uh, uh, we, we do talk about it briefly, but there was also right as you walked into the door, an update, which we'll get to about the House speakership mm -hmm. and, and all of that. But while we're inside of the circus tent, we should probably talk about Nancy Mace a Republican congresswoman representing South Carolina, who had another, uh, uh, just throw it on the pile, a big political stunt this week, uh, which also made the best case against book bans that we've seen recently. After becoming one of the key votes needed to oust former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Nancy Mace wore a white shirt with a large letter A printed onto it, seemingly meant to represent the scarlet letter from the classic Nathaniel What Hoffman did that letter novel. stand for again? I... Awesome? <laughs> Uh, it would lead uh, pretty much anyone who has read the book to assume that the <laughs> congresswoman was, for some reason, announcing to the world that she was an adulterer. <laughs> and I, I want to be clear here. I am a product of the Florida public education system, and even I read The Scarlet Letter when I was in yeah, school. Yeah, this is one of the staple books of the U.S. <laughs> education system. Everyone fucking reads it. Not even in like the second half. It's like freshman, uh, sophomore year reading. Yeah. It's a it's a thin book. There's not much to it. No. It has really like it, it has really basic themes that are good for teaching uh, literacy in schools. Um, it is there's just no excuse for completely missing the point of what that fucking letter means. Or at the very least, attempting to trick people into what it represents. Yeah. But that's cool that she fucks. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was either, either that she's coming out as an adulterer or she was cosplaying as Alvin. From Alvin! <laughs> from Alvin and the Chipmunks. But uh, that certainly wasn't the excuse that she gave. Instead, she seems to have just reinvented the meaning of it while somehow still referencing it back to the original novel. And for clarity, in the novel, a woman is forced to wear the letter A as punishment for having a child out of wedlock. 
Uh, it's the very brief summary of it, but uh, just so you understand. Now, the congresswoman willingly wore this shirt to claim that she was being demonized for being a woman who would dare to vote to oust the House Speaker. That... Okay. Every, uh, as Hassan often says, everyone's a fucking liberal. This is, this is some real, like... This is a conservative doing the, like... I'm, we are the witches that you failed to burn yeah. sort of thing. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, here she is in her own words. I'm wearing the scarlet letter after the week that I just had last week, being a woman up here and being demonized for my vote and for my voice. I'm here to let the rest of the world know and the country know I'm on the side of the people. I'm not on the side of the establishment. And I'm going to do the right thing every single time, no matter the consequences, because I don't answer to anybody in D.C. I don't answer to anyone in Washington. I only answer to the people. Wow. Mm. You go, girl. <laughs> And for an update on how the search for a new House Speaker is going, I mean, the position is still vacant. Mm -hmm. I'll take the job. <laughs> <laughs> and the current options seem to be between uh, Gymnasium Jordan yeah. and Steve Scalise. Uh, one is currently battling blood cancer. And also uh, has appeared uh, alongside white supremacists. It's yeah, has... In act actual video proof of that. A lot of baggage, uh, personally yeah. and health-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and the other seems to have willfully ignored a sex abuse scandal at Ohio State University while he was the wrestling coach. Mm -hmm. As of when we filmed this, it looked as though GOP members were leaning more towards Scalise, but it remains to be seen whether he will be able to garner the votes needed to be sworn in. And here's the update. Steve Scalise has removed himself from the options. Oh, okay. That was the alert that, uh, like, right when you walked through the door, I was like, oh, all right, well, uh, Steve Scalise is out. Uh, so I guess it's Jim Jordan then. No, he doesn't have the votes, I don't think. He doesn't. I kind of want him to have it. He's a terrible person, but... Uh, he's definitely uh, he's definitely the kind of guy who's been yelling at House speakers for uh, going over a decade. Now, how now. do you like it? And the second he gets that job, he's going to be like, oh, fuck, yeah. fuck. What have a I done? Everyone who is Speaker of the House, at least on the Republican side, um, comes out of it just an absolute mess. Uh, yeah. John Boehner was He tried speaker. to smoke himself to death. <laughs> <laughs> John Boehner, like, he... he that man was just visibly, obviously relieved to be done with that fucking job. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't light a match and throw it into the fucking chambers as he was leaving. Dude would have smoked a whole pack while sitting in Congress if he, if he could have. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, there's also some wild card options. Uh, you know, just to, to spice things up, we could have House Speaker Donald Trump. Fuck it. Or even House Speaker George Santos. At I agree. At some point in the near future. You know, all cards are on the table. Yeah. Who knows? But while we're on the topic of our silly, or in some cases, corrupt government, we have some Bob Menendez updates for you as well. He's got a DLC of his own. So if you somehow forgot, Democratic Senator from New Jersey, Bob Menendez, was the one who got caught with a half a million dollars worth of cash and gold bars in his house, text message exchanges that indicate uh, just clear-cut corruption, and an excuse which boiled down to, uh, people are attacking me and making things up because I am Latino. Mm-hmm. Well, throw this on the pile because Senator Bob Menendez has officially been charged with conspiring to act as a foreign agent. Wow. Uh, here's the Washington Post. <laughs> Senator Bob Menendez was charged in a superseding federal indictment on Thursday with conspiracy by a public official to act as a foreign agent, intensifying the legal peril facing the veteran lawmaker as he continues to resist calls to resign. Did you hear that? He's a veteran. More people should respect him. A marine biologist. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? A marine biologist. <laughs> Oorah. Uh, federal prosecutors charged Menendez, 69, and his wife, Nadine, with bribery last month, alleging that they accepted cash and gifts totaling hundreds of thousands of dollars in exchange for attempting to assist the Egyptian government. The senator, his wife, and three associates, Wael Hanna, Fred Dibes, and Joseph Uribe, were charged with conspiracy to commit bribery and conspiracy to commit honest services fraud. The Menendezes also were charged with conspiracy to commit extortion as a public official. Now, they and Hanna face an additional count for allegedly conspiring to have Menendez act as an illegal foreign agent on behalf of the Egyptian government while he was serving as a U.S. senator with access to sensitive intelligence as the former head of the Senate's Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, <laughs> cool. This is sick. I love it. Hey, this. at least the swamp is draining now, I guess. This is awesome. Mm. So Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman, who we refer to as 
the Fetterman. Yeah. Was one of the first people to respond to the initial charges by demanding that Senator Menendez resign from his position, which was met with a resounding no. <laughs> and now, with these new charges added to the pile, the Fetterman is once again leading the charge to remove him from the Senate, saying in a statement, Senator Menendez should not be a U.S. Senator. He should have been gone long ago. It is time for every one of my colleagues in the Senate to join me in expelling Senator Menendez. We cannot have an alleged foreign agent in the United States Senate. This is not a close call. And, you know, he's said a lot of things this week that I have some problems with, but it's nice to nice to be back on the same page as Senator John Fetterman. Uh, speaking of uh, people throwing away all goodwill, um, Governor Gavin Newsom. Spent, what is he doing? <laughs> spent, God, I hate this man. Like August and September. Just veto. Do, do, doing like decent things, showing up yeah. and, and, and uh, taking the air out of a lot of uh, really bad faith arguments from yeah. the right. Uh, putting himself out there in in very public ways on Fox News and, and all this stuff, doing like some damage control with stuff that was uh, done in bad faith, and then comes back to California and vetoes a ton of really great bills. Yeah, no, uh, stuff that the California legislature, which is very m much further to his left than he is apparently, mm -hmm. uh, stuff they passed, like, good laws. Good shit. Yeah. And he's all he's doing this all so he can run for president in fucking 2028 and eat shit. He's not going to win. Jerry Brown, your old boss, sir. Jerry Brown tried this shit in 1992 and ate shit. They will not elect a California governor to the White House unless that California governor was Ronald Reagan. Yeah, well, that remains to be seen. But uh, nevertheless, a lot of cool things could have happened if it weren't for the stroke of a pen. They were ready to legalize psychedelics. <laughs> that, I'm so fucking mad. That is one of the cool ones. There, there were some other, like... Uh, in the grand scheme of things, more important stuff that he did, yeah. you know, but, but, but that one, uh, that I took that personally. <laughs> yeah. But motherfucker. Uh, all right. We do have more news coming up for you in just a second. And that will include some tech news. If you're really lucky, although it might have some things to do with Elon. Musk. But, uh, first though, we do have to thank today's sponsors, uh, starting with stitch fix because the seasons they're changing. It's and ready, that means get that, ready to start dressing. Yeah, that your wardrobe needs to change too. Uh, have you been living in the same shorts and t-shirts all summer? Ready to up your wardrobe game but don't know where to start? Or even what size you are at some of the trendy online shops? Well, it's time to get yourself a Stitch Fix stylist. Stitch Fix is an easy way to get clothes that fit you without having to endlessly browse through options or spend outside your budget. Think of them as your style partner. Your stylist will learn about your taste and collaborate with you on looks that you'll love without breaking the bank. With your choices in mind and a wide range of sizes available from extra small to triple XL, they'll find your perfect fit and send you clothes handpicked just for you. They have over a thousand brands and styles and do the work of choosing the best options for you. They'll even show you how to wear head to toe outfits so you can just get dressed and go. And if you don't love something, just send it back. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free. In our experience, Stitch Fix is just about the easiest possible way to add a couple new items to your wardrobe a few times a year. A lot of times you'll even end up with something that you love that you never would have actually even tried on at the store or even taken off the rack. Yeah, thanks, Stitch Fix. They they just get us. They'll get you too. Try today at stitchfix.com slash newsday and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash newsday. Stitchfix.com slash newsday. And this episode is sponsored by Factor. With the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. Relish the best of autumn with fall flavors. They're limited time only, hearty, comforting meals featuring seasonal veggies like cranberry pecan chicken and apple Dijon pork chops. Ready in just two minutes, they'll satisfy your fall cravings during the busy season without the hassle. I had this, uh, I don't know the exact ingredients, it was like a sage chicken with sweet potatoes and these like caramelized apples. Uh, it, it was incredible. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45 plus add-ons to suit various preferences and tastes. Choose from breakfast items like their delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet. Or for an easy wellness boost, try refreshing beverage options like cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. This October, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash Newsday50 and use code Newsday50 to get 50% off. That's code Newsday50 at factormeals.com slash Newsday50 to get 50% off. All right, yeah, let's round out today's episode with some actual tech news since that was supposed to be the theme today. And we'll start with something that's just a little Twitter adjacent because back when shit was really hitting the fan over on Twitter amidst the removal of verification badges and in this specific case, the addition of a deceptive tag that read U.S. State Affiliated Media, uh -huh. one news agency in particular finally said, hey, enough's enough. Well, this platform is devolving to something that we don't want to be a part of. We're just going to leave. And at the time, it was considered kind of a risky choice, and that's because of the amount of traffic that Twitter theoretically provides. But it turns out that the reality of Twitter traffic is more in line with what tech analysts have been shouting about all social media impressions for years. It does not translate into actual traffic on those brands' actual websites. Now, according to a recent report, NPR's decision to leave Twitter behind has had little to no effect on their overall site traffic. We fucking called this. Team. Yeah. Here you go. Last April, the company gave NPR a reason to quit. It labeled the network U.S. State Affiliated Media, a designation that was at odds with Twitter's own definition of the term. NPR stopped posting from its account on April 4th. A week later, it posted its last update, a series of tweets directing users to NPR's newsletters, app, and other social media accounts. Many member stations across the country, including KUOW in Seattle, LAist in Los Angeles, and Minnesota Public Radio, followed suit. Six months later, we can see that the effects of leaving Twitter have been negligible. A memo circulated to NPR staff says traffic has dropped by only a single percentage point as a result of leaving Twitter, now officially renamed X. Though traffic from the platform was small already and accounted for just under 2% of traffic before the posting stopped. Mm -hmm. While NPR's main account had 8.7 million followers and the politics account had just under 3 million, quote, the platform's algorithm updates made it increasingly challenging to reach active users. You often saw a near immediate drop off in engagement after tweeting and users rarely left the platform, the memo says. There's one view of these numbers that confirms what many of us in news have long suspected, that Twitter wasn't worth the effort, at least in terms of traffic. Yeah, and I've seen a great example of this and it keeps popping up in my feed. And, and, and look, no shame to them. I'm sure they're getting a deal on Twitter ad services and I'm not even gonna name the company. But there's a company who is uh, running Twitter ads right now, and it's it has a video on it, and the impressions say something like two million something views. There's less than a dozen replies to this mm -hmm. Twitter ad, and I clicked through because it's an ad promoting a YouTube video. And I clicked through to the YouTube video. The YouTube video has like under ten thousand views, and it's uh, uh, on a channel that has like a million subscribers. So. It ain't working. That's it. No. There, there is clear cut proof. If you actually look through, if there's something that can actually, in this case, it's it's a perfect example because it takes you to a YouTube page where the numbers aren't gonna lie. So if you look at any of their ads that push you somewhere else where you can see the actual traffic, you can see that it's absolutely doing nothing. Yeah. Um. So, just more proof throughout throw the pile. I do love that they're like, yeah, our our uh, it dropped by one percentage. But honestly. We weren't getting traffic from Twitter even in the best of times. Yeah. 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 They're doing great. Mm -hmm. LA is very good, uh, very good radio station. My my allegiances uh, were with KCRW for many years, mm. but LA is 89.3, formerly known as, uh, I don't remember. KPCC. What. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's LA is. I think it's a better station. Uh, it doesn't have music, but. Yeah, I uh, like KCRW because I'll turn it on. I don't know if I'm getting uh, some NPR news or uh, some. Some uh, nice... LA is has way better uh, original programming. Yeah, and you can get all of it uh, on their on their app yeah. and elsewhere if you want to. Or uh, and they do good stuff that uh, even if you don't live in LA, you might enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, elsewhere in tech adjacent news, uh, 404 Media is keeping a consistent pace with great coverage of topics that we love, and we we want to keep reiterating that you should definitely check out their site 
and socials. Their big story this week is that they were able to finally get a hold of the actual dash cam footage from the LAPD officers who ignored crimes in progress, choosing instead to find and catch rare Pokemon while on duty. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Here's a bit of info from their coverage, and we will add a short clip from the video. Links to the full coverage and footage are down in the description below, as always. Two Los Angeles Police Department officers who ignored a robbery in progress in order to catch a Snorlax and to Togetic? They're going to ru ruin you in the comments. They yelled at me last time, but I've forgotten the yeah, correction. Yeah, look, we don't care. I know the Snorlax. I can say that one, too. A togetic in Pokemon Go also rolled through a stop sign, sped through residential neighborhoods, and zoomed over speed bumps, tailgated various cars, and drove the wrong way down a one-way road in order to catch them all. Video of the incident obtained by 404 Media six years after the event shows. The author of the article adds, For the last several years, I have been generally obsessed with this April 15th, 2017 incident, which resulted in the firing of officers Louis Luzano and Eric Mitchell. Now, more than six years later, we have video of the incident, which fills in some crucial details that were left out of a previous transcript and investigation report I obtained while I was working at Motherboard. And he includes a five-minute cut-down version of the original three-hour-long dash cam footage. Uh, and his edit obviously just highlights all of the Pokemon talk and actions. And he also adds some context thanks to the uh, internal affairs report. Lozano and Mitchell were on patrol. Got a call in through the radio about a robbery in progress at a local mall right next to where they were stationed at the time. Lozano and Mitchell scoff proclaim to each other that they don't want to help, <laughs> then ignore both the call for help as well as another cop directly asking them why they didn't respond. The two then talk to a man on the street about whether or not he had been drinking in public, then zoom through the alleys and streets of Los Angeles in search of a high-level Snorlax and Togetic in their game of Pokemon Go. Hey boy, I'm going to be possible in progress. Can we have a air unit response? Incredible stuff. Uh, it, again, at least they're not blowing up entire neighborhoods, though they did put people's lives at risk by driving the wrong way and uh, tailgating and speeding through neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, a full video and report are linked in, in the uh, description below. Definitely support 404. They do fantastic work. And as a brand new media company, uh, they, they need your views. Help them get started. Thanks to viewers like you. Mm hmm Anyway, these final two stories involve topics that we've been outwardly furious about for years now and what hopefully appears to be steps forward towards justice. Mm -hmm. uh, first up, losers who roll coal and the people, websites, and companies that create and sell the parts needed to do so. Now, for the unaware, and honestly, if I hadn't seen it on the internet, I wouldn't know what it is. No uh, one, Florida. This is not something that happens here. I, some parts of the country... Happens a lot more. In the but, South. Uh, yeah, it's in the South where everyone has yeah. diesel trucks for absolutely mm -hmm. no reason because they claim to have big, gigantic properties that they need these trucks. Uh, I've got to haul my... You don't... Yeah. No. You live down the street in an apartment complex and you're rolling coal on cyclists because it makes you happy. Boom. Yeah. So anyway, rolling coal, it's not a sexual euphemism. <laughs> it's, it's when someone modifies a diesel engine so they can release plumes of thick black smoke whenever they feel like it. And they usually feel like doing it whenever... Cyclists, runners, or electric and hybrid vehicles are nearby. Mm -hmm. Those are all very lib-coded. <laughs> so, yeah, it's literally a pastime for some of the, the biggest assholes on Earth who, ironically, have very small penises. Very small. Well, look, it looks like one of the easiest ways to get the parts necessary to make this modification might finally become more difficult because eBay is facing an absolutely massive fine for allowing the parts to be sold on its website. Here's the independent with more eBay is facing a fine of nearly $2 billion for allegedly enabling the sale of rolling coal devices and other deliberately polluting equipment that violates environmental laws. The U.S. Department of Justice alleges that the online retailer sold more than 343,000 so-called defeat devices in violation of the Clean Air Act, with each sale the subject of a $5,580 fine. 
Online video compilations show drivers of pickup trucks deliberately rolling coal as they pass cyclists and electric vehicles. And yeah, I, we talked, this was probably a story we covered years ago, but it's like someone actually like did the, the math on like how much more these cars pollute. And it's like fucking yeah. insane. It's like a thousand times the uh, CO2 and uh, other greenhouse gases going into the atmosphere compared to like a normal car. I, 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 like I said, I live out here now, so I, have, I, I don't see it consistently as much, but I was visiting, I think last year and someone did it in front of me, uh, not to me. Luckily, my dad owns a truck and I use his truck when I'm home. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know, I'm Republican coded, but yeah. I'm driving around. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, they, they, they were sitting at a stoplight and we're just, I guess we're bored and they're like, you know what would be cool right now? If I flooded this entire uh, crosswalk with thick smoke. I don't know if that's more annoying or the people that attach a, a fucking like train whistle to their cars. Well, they, they <laughs> that, it's early in the morning. They should be up cooking breakfast. Yeah. Woo woo. The whistles go woo. <laughs> anyway, it continues. Until recently, the devices required to perform it were relatively easy to find through online retailers, costing between $200 and $500. The Justice Department wrote in its complaint, which was filed on behalf of the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, in a federal court in New York, that the rolling coal devices defeat motor vehicle emission controls set out in the Clean Air Act. Aftermarket defeat devices significantly increase pollution emissions, including carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, particulate matter, and non-methane hydrocarbons that harm public health, the complaint stated. The EPA criminalized the practice, which appears to be mainly confined to the U.S. <laughs> hey, weird, nobody's doing this anywhere else in the world. <laughs> In 2014, with some states warning of fines of up to $5,000 for anyone caught doing it. Several companies who sell coal rolling equipment have already been forced to pay fines of up to $1 million for breaking the law. For their part, eBay is saying that they have already banned the devices and uh, they are policing the site, but it's apparently not as effective as they'd hoped because according to the DOJ, there are millions of listings appearing each year. Yeah. And it is funny. I, I, they say it's mostly confined to the U.S. So that means, I, I guarantee you, there's like some dude in fucking like Sweden. Oh, yeah, who, one guy. Who had these shipped internationally. You would think he would be shamed by the community. Yeah, probably, but he don't care. Yeah, He right. lives life by the beat of his own drum. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, pretty cool, huh? I do agree, though. The, uh, the uh, Back at my old place, there was someone that lived nearby with a very loud muffler, and they would get up early to go to work. And because they were parked underneath a parking garage, it would set off every car alarm within like a block Ugh, at God. seven o'clock in the morning. Just like you're driving in a cord. You don't it, it doesn't need to sound like a race car. I can't remember where it is. It might be it's like New York or London, but they they set up like traffic light cameras. But with sound based the sound based and like mm -hmm. you automatically get ticketed if your car is like cool. over a certain number of decibels. Someone yeah. scared the shit out of me the other day when I was jogging. I had my uh, headphones in, and they were like at a light or something, and just gunned it, and it was, wow! It was the, and just the dinkiest little car. And it was the loudest thing, and it cut through, and I, I thought someone was going to like get onto the sidewalk and run me over or something. This shit's so fucking stupid. Yeah. Anyways, over to the other story about assholes hopefully getting served some justice. And in this case, it's just pay your fucking taxes, you gigantic corporation. Microsoft has been told that they've done a bit of an oopsie when it comes to filing their taxes oh, properly. Oh, jeez. And the Internal Revenue Service has officially sent the bill, which comes out to nearly $30 billion. And that is one hell of an oopsie. Here's The Verge. The Internal Revenue Service, IRS, has informed Microsoft that the company owes back taxes of $28.9 billion plus penalties and interest for the tax years 2004 <laughs> through oh my God. 2013. What? According to an SEC filing. Microsoft's corporate VP of Worldwide Tax and Customs, Daniel Goff, responded to the audit in a blog post and says the company has changed its corporate structure and practices since the years covered by the audit. Throwing Steve Ballmer under the bus here. Fix the glitch. Yeah, well, now uh, we need to remove him as owner of the Clippers. Yeah. Because that was... Uh, What's he, he up to? He bought all that with money that was supposed to go to the government and funding yeah. social services. He spent most of it just on water, though, because he's a very sweaty guy. Yeah, and introducing the worst mascot of all time, that condor that flies around. They around. still got the, the Converse condor? Yes, and it's silly because, as everyone has pointed out, it was right there. You got Steve Ballmer with the Clippers. This mascot should have been Clippy mm -hmm. from yeah. uh, Microsoft Word. Yeah. 
or you just go bonkers with it like uh, every every mascot in, in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, just get weird. No one cares. Yeah, but don't bring those mascots to L.A. Boltman. The spirit of, well, Boltman is unofficial, but the spirit of Tommy Lasorda will fight the Philly fanatic anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, anyway, it continues. The issues raised by the IRS are relevant to the past, but not to our current practices, Goff states. The IRS's proposed adjustments don't reflect the amounts the company paid under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, according to Goff, who claims that could decrease the final tax owed by up to $10 billion. All right, well, that's still the, I don't know, $20 billion you owe there, buddy. Additionally, Microsoft claims the IRS disagrees with the way Microsoft allocated profits internationally through an arrangement of transfer prices called cost sharing. Microsoft says it disagrees with the IRS's proposed adjustments and will vigorously contest them. Once we get done with this uh, Activision. Pay your taxes, you bitch. (laughs) Yup. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Uh, Please like the video. Obviously, last episode we did was necessary, but also not exactly the most fun episode we've done. So it was nice to have... uh, Uh, Not that any of these stories aren't detrimental to uh, the way that our government operates and government we have to all live under. You know, it's actually good that Congress isn't in session right now because God knows the the fucking bullshit they'd be getting up to. Oh, my God. Just just the, the, like... Just based on their public statements Lindsey Lindsey Graham appearing and uh, being extremely bloodthirsty. Kevin McCarthy uh, being such a failure might have indirectly saved us from declaring war on Iran. So we do have that to thank him for. Yes. Uh... Yeah, it, it, there's obviously you're aware there's a lot going on, uh, all very touchy stuff. We do have a video on it if you want to watch it. But in the meantime, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video, leave a comment, reply to a comment, be nice to each other down there. And uh, also check out our two recent videos. We have the one that we talked about and also an episode of Weekly Weird News if you want more lighter affair. We'll be back soon with more weird news. So stay tuned. Bye-bye. Bye.